Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. We are listening to the Melvin's Ozma. Check out yesterday's video for how I think about this awesome slab of fucking sludgy doom history. And today we're going to be going over the Melvin's Bullhead. This was recorded in 1990 and just is... So fucking heavy. I mean, this is where Boris got their fucking name from. Like, oh my god. When it comes to just interesting songs and just heavy fucking songs, this is so ahead of its fucking time, it's just mind boggling. Like, and then considering just how busy this band got in like 1992 with Lysol and the Buzzo EP, Dale EP, Joe Preston EP. I'm pretty sure they had something else. And then you have Lysol, which pretty much, you know, contributed to Drone and stuff. And like bands like Earth uh, and Sun, you know, kind of taking that sound and then running with it and doing their own thing where Bullhead here is just, oh my god, it, it's pretty much the blueprint to the American Doom album, in my opinion, like, it's just so well written, it's so fucking fun to listen to as well, like, and it's so fucking heavy, like, the drums on here are just thunderous it's like fucking Thor himself is just like banging that shit out it's Dale is just one of the best drummers in the game I remember when I first was kind of getting into the Melvins and I was really really late to the like actually buying Melvins albums party and whatnot like I always kind of um, would hear them in bike videos and skate videos and uh, that song Junebug from who, uh, I forget, I might be on Houdini, but I've heard that song so many times just through bike videos and shit. And so when I actually started checking out the Melvins, I watched a performance of theirs at a, a record store, um, Aniba, and uh, they had two drummers, and it was just one of the heaviest fucking things I had ever heard and that really really turned me on to the Melvins and it just got me even more into where I was stuck already at Stoner Witch and Houdini but as soon as I fucking heard the track Boris on here I needed to hear more so as soon as I listened to this entire album, sadly on YouTube was the way I listened to it the first time, and then I stole it from Mediafire, I'm sorry, but uh, it happens, but that was back when the computer still worked, and I kind of not really forgot about it, but I just was into a, a little bit different, I was, I was listening to a lot of like black metal and funeral doom and fucking grind and kind of the Melvins were on the back burner but I really the, the track Boris always stuck out in my mind and uh, one day I was just pedaling down the street and um, on my Spotify I, it was on like you know when you put a daily mix and uh, this fucking Boris came on not the band the Melvins track and what you have on Bullhead is probably one of the heaviest but also like I said kind of pop sensible tracks ever written and what I mean by that is like you know you can sing along and like you could just like fucking bang your head and participate like instead of just like subconsciously like you know or just even physically like just by you know being into the music and the riffs and whatnot but I digress. Let me get back to what I was talking about. So, the track listing is as follows. Boris, Anaconda, Ligature, 
it's shoved zodiac. If I had an exorcism, you're blessed cow, and you have Dale on drums, Buzz on guitar and vocals, and Lorax on bass. And this is recorded by Jonathan Burnside in 1990. And you just have cool pictures of the band fucking thrashing out, having fun. The Kiss album that um, later was used in 1992 on the Melvins uh, EP series, which I, I think super fucking cool. Like, for a band to put out, like, this much material, I know it's very overwhelming. Like, when I was looking at their discography, I was just like, holy shit. Like, a fan like Grim Trash Can, like, he probably owns every single one of those albums, regardless if it's, you know, the best that they put out or not. Like, he's a Melvin's fan through and through, and that's fucking awesome. It's just like, uh, I'm only into a couple of records by these guys and you know, I'm no historian. I just know when I hear something that I fucking like and I wanna share with other people. And it's like Grim read my fucking mind or some shit because we were talking about uh, on Trash Talk Tuesdays like a week ago while this package was in the mail already i was like yeah like i've been listening to ozma and bullhead a lot by the melvins i'm not sure if i mentioned bullhead but that's what i, I was listening to both these albums a fuckload at the time and uh i mentioned it and grim and sewer sloth were just like oh like that stuff's essential and whatnot and that was just like, when this was in, came in the mail and was in that package, I just was like, holy fuck, like, you know, it's like he read my fucking mind, and it's just awesome, and this is such a great gift, like, apologizing for a ding, like, dude, I'm just fucking happy that, you know, I can listen to this whenever the fuck I want. But back to Bullhead here, seriously, so many bands just copy this formula and there's nothing wrong with that because this formula works it's it's just so fucking heavy and awesome and different but the thing that stands out from every other fucking sludgy doom band out there is nobody plays like buzz nobody plays like dale and especially the tracks that are drum driven on here, it's just like, wow. Fucking wow. Like, how did you, how did you come up with that idea? That idea alone, like, is merit enough to make this video. Like, I don't even know the track title by, I, like, I, I don't know the name of the track that's, it's just, it starts with drums and it's just, Oh my god, like, the whole track might even be drums, I, I forget actually off the top of my head, but just, just fucking, oh my god, <laughs> you need to get this in your life if you're a fan of fucking heavy music in any way, like, I mean, this is not fucking, you know, DSI, this is not anything along the lines of something the Ross Bay cult would put out. But what this is, is some killer fucking essential goddamn music for fans of heavy music. Like, I, I don't get like why some people are like, uh, like the Melvins are overrated. Like, that's your fucking opinion. But when it comes down to history, no. Like, they were fucking totally essential when it came to multiple, like, subgenres and genres of music. They weren't scared to fucking put their necks out. And it shows on a record like Bullhead that it was like, hey, fuck everybody else. We're gonna do what we want to do and we're gonna sound like we want to sound. This sounds like nobody else I can possibly think of besides Black Sabbath and Black Flag. But, not really, it's way more just fucking heavy as fuck and it's own monster. 
It's like Buzz created fucking, you know, Frankenstein's monster in Bullhead. Because this is a total departure, kind of, sort of, from Ozma. As you can hear, like, Ozma's very, very, not, like, super easy to listen to, but... If you're a fan of extreme music, this is very, you know, easy to get into and very easy to enjoy. Ozma is just, a, like I said yesterday, an amazingly written record. And Bullhead just ups the ante and ups the heaviness to fucking 11. I hate that cliche. Why did I say that? Seriously, that was corny. I take that back, but it's true. Seriously, it's fucking crushing, like, and, uh, just in case, you know, you guys care, this is plain black, and that's the way a record like this should be. To me, the essential records, like, I, I just think they're best in black, like, I don't know, it's the way that, you know, it was originally, I guess, intended, like, and... I really do like the uh, the blend here. I mean, you can use your imagination of what like a repress of this would look like in clear with all this crazy fucking you know blue fruit splatter and stuff. I'm sure it exists too. I mean, I didn't look it up or anything, but and again, there's nothing wrong with that because if you're a completionist when it comes to collecting then you're gonna have every version of everything and at first like even years ago like when I saw people with like converged Jane Doe test pressings I was like whoa like how, how how did you get that like I always wondered how some people got test pressings and then it's like oh they knew somebody in the band or at the record label or they dropped an entire fucking paycheck on you know the album on eBay or something but when it comes to the Melvin's bullhead like this is worth your money this is worth your time this is worth your fucking eardrums bleeding like blast this record maximum volume does yield maximum results and just such a fucking amazing just piece of music like in I, I have nothing really to say besides just completely blown away the first time I heard this, fell in love with it instantly, and if you're a fan of heavy music, especially the sludgy, doomier side of things, like, fuck yeah. You are going to love the experimental side of Bullhead as well, especially with the drumming. Like, nobody was really drumming that like heavy and that fucking like you know throwing just straight kind of drum solos almost in the middle of your songs and having it still work like it's just amazing like it's like when experiments go right and you know something like like a, a disease curing medicine is like created not like that guy that accidentally created penicillin. I mean, it was an accident, and that's cool and all, and we're all better in the long run for him creating that, but it's the same thing with, like, Buzz and Dale and the Melvins. Like, they created something that has stood the test of time, and yeah, Bullhead is just a fucking top-notch, straight-up 10 out of goddamn 10 and this is the Boner Records reissue, um, 2014. Thank you, Grim Trash Can. This is just such a fucking amazing album. And I'm not a Melvin's historian, but I do know Lysol is amazing. I gave it a couple listens. Holy fuck. And just knowing that they put out those EPs and stuff and everything else that came... It's just like... Ah! Like, doing a little bit of research on the Melvins is overwhelming, so, you know, my hat goes off to you, Grim Trash Can, for fucking doing those Melvins Mondays podcasts or whatever, just killer shit.
Oh, thanks for watching. Hails.